All right, yes. Yeah. So guys, we just ended up talking about the websites which use this process of web development. But now it's time to talk about what is a language which makes all of this actually possible. And I did mention it a couple times. Anybody want to take a jab? What's the website? What, what, are the, what is the main language which makes web development possible? JavaScript. Bing, bing, bing. Exactly. Um, Nish, perfectly talking right there. JavaScript indeed is what makes this possible. Uh, you should also say in JavaScript, exactly, yeah. So JavaScript, guys, is the biggest language which makes all web development possible. In fact, it is so big that over 1.8 billion websites in the world use JavaScript. Now, JavaScript is essentially the backbone of any website. Essentially, any website you go to, 98% of the time, they will have JavaScript. And that is because it is so prevalently used and it makes web development so much nicer and easier and much more elegant. And JavaScript is also one of the most you know, hot programming languages to learn. And it is a good thing. We're gonna be learning some of the basic aspects of it throughout these next couple of weeks. And it's also you know, a great thing to know because you're able to make websites, which personally you can make projects for yourself. And it's a great thing to know that uh, it'll help you out. Now, for those, of us, for those of us who are new here today, I'm talking about a language, say in JavaScript, you're probably like, what is he talking about? What, what language? What is this JavaScript, right? Well, just like how in human interactions, right, we have so many different languages. We got English, we got Chinese, we got Mandarin, you got Urdu, we got Hindi, whatever the case is, right? There's so many different languages. And just like how we're able to communicate from human to human in different languages, computers also have a bunch of different languages. They have JavaScript. They have Java, they have Python, they have Swift, they have C++, C. All of these are a bunch of different languages. And guess what? The main thing is that once you know one language, you know all of them. Because in computer science, well, the only difference is the syntax. Just like if I say hello in English and I say hola in Spanish, right? What's the difference? They both mean the same thing, right? They're a greeting from one person to another. In computer science, that, that concept, that ideology essentially it transfers over 100% of the time. It's just a difference of whatever language you choose, you're just communicating to the computer in a bit different manner, but at the end of the day, you're telling the computer to do something, and then that's just, that's pretty cool how it relates, right? And JavaScript is just one of the many languages which we'll be focusing on throughout these next four weeks, guys. Alrighty, so I earlier talked about, now we're gonna to start to get into more of the technical aspect, setting ourselves up for some success in these next four weeks and talking about what is actually required to do this whole thing of web development, right? And I touched on this a little bit when we were talking about uh, the websites like the Elk Grove Village Library website or the ESPN Cricket website. And there are three main files which we have to keep in mind when talking about web development. The first is the HTML. Yep, that's how you pronounce it, HTML. And that's where we structure our, our whole website, essentially. It's responsible for the front end of our website. Now, I just talked about front end and back end. Can anybody give me a reminder? We talked about it earlier today. Anybody give a quick recap of what's the difference between this front end and back end in computer science? You can unmute your mic or just drop in the chat. What is the front end and what is the back end? We talked about, you know, how HTML is used for the front end, while as JavaScript is used for the back end, right? Anybody have any thoughts on that? Uh, I think that it like means that like front end means like uh like the main the like the front page of the website, the first thing that people see, and then like the back end is like the the main code and like all the commands where they're being run through agree agree 100 percent avani should we take something too i was gonna say that all right all right anybody else want to chime in and feel free to unmute guys it is everybody here's the learner even though i've been doing this for six seven years i'm still learning i'm nowhere near a, a professional you know i'm not lebron james coding essentially right so it's not you don't become an expert over just a couple of years. You got to learn, learn, learn. Every day there's new things coming out. And the only way to learn is ask questions and do research. So ask questions or share your thoughts, right? 
All right, cool. All right, yeah. So Avanish and Ayush, thank you so much for sharing, guys. And that is, you guys hit the nail on the head. You guys talked about how front end is how the website looks, how it looks to the users, right? How it appeals to our eyes, the whole layout, the colors, stuff like that. And that's where the HTML and the CSS are coming into play. HTML is used to structure the website, while the CSS makes the whole website look nice. That's something which we will also do with our project, while JavaScript is where all of the brains of the operation happen, right? It's think about it like a car analogy. How does a Ferrari look on the outside? A Ferrari looks amazing, red, red exterior, got a nice body, right? But how does the Ferrari actually work? Well, it functions because of the engine, the transmission, right? All of those moving parts. And that's how coding works as well. And in web development, the Ferrari's exterior, like the body of the car, the rims, the wheels, all of those are the HTML and CSS because it's the structure and the color of the car. But the actual way the car works is the engine, the transmission, all of those other parts. So a good way to remember these things as we're going through, it's a great way to remember things in general, make an analogy. Think about how does this concept I'm learning about relate to a real world, real life experience or example. In that way, something will just stay in your mind much more permanently and you will not end up forgetting it in the future. All righty, so now we're gonna do a quick coding review uh, of just one or two concepts. It's gonna be one simple concept and then one uh, HTML concept. So one JavaScript concept and one HTML concept, and then just keep it in light. And then we'll look at our website, which we're gonna use, and then we'll call it a wrap for the day. So let's get on started with what this coding concept is for the day. But before I go there, anybody have any questions, anything they wanna share, ask, they're confused about at this point. In the chat, you can personally message me or unmute. If not, we will start to continue on. All right, cool. All right, everybody's doing good. Great to see. All right, so let's get started with our first coding concept, and that is the concept of variables. Now, before I say, you know, talk about what variables actually are and what they do, anybody want to have an idea? from the past courses, what is a variable? Anybody wanna give their thoughts? Is it like a, a symbol or something like, uh, it's like a symbol that means something else. So like, uh, there's like a key that determines the meaning of the symbol, like a different letter or a number can uh, be, have a different meaning. Like an algebra is an example, like X, Y or any, letter can signify a different number. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Ayush, yep, exactly. Talking about Ayush perfectly. Yeah, uh, yeah so, what's up, Ayush? Variables, like you can make one and use it for like other purposes, like functions. So like, you know, like the building block, like anything, like you have to like first make a variable before you do like anything in coding. Yep, because uh, you have to like create like uh, an imaginary thing, which is the variable, so you can put stuff into it. Exactly, yeah, great, great thoughts. Anybody else? So great, you guys touched on some of the important stuff, how variables are sort of like, you know, you have keys, identifiers, but in like the larger scheme of things, where I think we're, this is where we were getting at, right? That variables are a way for us to store data. And more specifically, you can think about variables as a box because what is the main purpose of a box? A cardboard box, you insert stuff in it, right? You use it as a storage, right? And variables are exactly like that. Variables are a way for us to store data. Now, it could either be some algebraic data like Ayush was talking about. It could be strings, it could be words, it could be letters, whatever the case is. A variable is able to store all of that. So once again, you guys are seeing right here that we're making a connection of a coding concept to a real life example. And that's exactly what we did right here, right? And that's gonna be the key as we get more and more in depth into some more challenging concepts, which we'll get through and we'll answer any questions which come about. But the main thing is make an analogy. Think about how does this thing relate to my real life? And hopefully it sticks to you much, much more. And that is exactly what we just did. A variable is a box, right? It's a way, it's a container for our data and a way for us to store our data.
Now let's take a look at how this looks like in a coding aspect, right? So in code, we're able to store a bunch of different values. Now these values could range from numbers, words, to Booleans. What is a Boolean? Don't worry, we'll talk about that later on, next or the third week probably. A Boolean is a true or a false. It's a way for us to check a condition. Now in this case, we're able to see a bunch of different variables. So who, who could tell me what type of variable is this first variable, this var x equals five? Who can uh, let us know? What is this? Is it a uh, integer? Is it a string? Is it a Boolean variable? This var x equals five. An integer? Integer, yep. Yep, yep, yep. okay. Numbers. All right, so I'm gonna drop in the chat now. What type of variable is this? Uh, coming in now. A string, yep, yep. And the way you know it's a string, right, is because we got those quotation marks, which, make, which makes it really easy to identify. What about what is this? Um, this might be a bit of a curveball, but what is this? Is it a string or is it a variable? Or is it a, it is a variable. Is it a string or is it an integer variable? Any other thoughts? I use say integer, okay. Rachet, uh, Rashid, uh, Shiva, anybody else thoughts? All right, so we've got, we got a bit of a leading uh, majority right here. Some people saying Boolean, some people saying integer. And the correct answer is none of the above. It's actually a string variable. And the reason is because we got it, we got the data, right? It's stored inside of a uh, quotation marks. And that's the main thing, which lets us know that we're dealing with a string variable. So that's a bit of a curveball. But integers, you can directly declare them like we're doing right here, var x equals five. What that is telling us is that the variable x is storing the value of five. So that's how we essentially read code in English, right? So this first line is telling us the variable x stores the value of five. Who can read me the second line in English? As an English sentence, what is that var y equals six? What does that mean? The variable y is equivalent to six. Exactly. And I usually would take a stab at the third one too. What is the variable of z equal to? Variable of z is equal to x plus y, or I guess five plus six. Exactly right. So the variable z would end up holding the sum, which is 11. And that's a quick little example, which we'll do today as well. But that's the main coding concept, which we're going to review the first one of a couple more in the next coming weeks. But it is a concept of variables, which we're going to use in our project as well. Variables, guys, remember, store data, and that data can range from strings, variables, booleans, you name it, and variables can store it. So that was a JavaScript concept, which we just covered. Now I want to talk about a quick HTML concept, which we'll get into today, that being a button. Yeah, just a button in HTML. Because remember, HTML is used to structurize our website. It's responsible for the front end of our website, unlike the JavaScript, which is handling all of the behind the scenes action. On the other hand, HTML is going to be responsible for the front end. And today we're talking about one of the main front end um, pieces, that being a button. Now, buttons, there's, you know, you can relate them to a real life uh, analogy in the sense that they are an action call. They are what allows for something to be done. Like when I'm starting my car, the push to, the push to start, right? Maybe your car has that too. I'm pressing a button and something ends up happening. What ends up happening? My car starts up, the engine ignition starts up and the car is well on your way, right? So that is exactly what buttons are. When you click them, there is an action which is supposed to happen. And that is exactly what happens in computer science and web development as well. When I click a button, a certain action happens. And the way we're gonna link this to a real world concept is that idea of the push to start. Do you guys know what I'm talking about, right? In your car, when you go with your parents, I don't, none of us, none of you guys can drive here, but you guys, I, if any of you guys have, your car has that push to start, right? You guys know what I'm talking about? Or am I just, 
Uh, yeah, the push to start. Yeah, exactly. I know. I know. Some cards have that button start, but our card doesn't have it. Yeah, so it's the thing with uh, uh, newer cards. Like if you push to start, and that you can think about that is what a button is. You click that button, you hold it, and something happens. And what happens? Your card starts up. And similarly in code, when we click a button, something's going to happen. And that something will be related to our code. So we've talked a bunch, bunch, bunch about what code is, what computer science is, what web development is, some coding concepts like the variable and the button. But now let's sort of start to experiment with those skills and see what can we actually do today? So today, this going to be a little refresher, a little introduction as to how to use these concepts. And we're going to be doing all of this action, guys, on this website called jsfiddle.net. So I'm going to drop the link to the website in the chat. And I would recommend in the next minute or two, you guys get on the website as well. And the link is now in the chat. There we go. So I'm going to go on over to the website as well. And if anybody's having any difficulty, let me know. But just we well, use want to navigate to the website and open it up. Now, what I would recommend is that, you know, Zoom is a different window. The coding website is a different window. Uh, what probably be the best is that if by any chance, if you have an extra device, like a tablet or an extra laptop, if possible, maybe have that open to the side with and have Zoom open in that in the coming weeks, right? So that you can code and follow along side by side like that, right? Or another possibility is that you could, I could show you the link of my code and you could just follow along directly there, whatever the case is. But I would recommend that if possible, it would be a great thing for you to actually type the code out because that's how you are gonna remember it as well. As compared to just following along with me, you remember it, but studies show that when you actually do it in, in, in action, you're more likely to remember it, right? If I was to learn to drive a car by just looking at my parents, I wouldn't remember it, right? But if I actually got in the driver's seat and learned how to drive the car, that's how I remember how to drive the car. Another example. I use good idea, same split screen. A great thing to do. Split screen it up and you'll remember it. For this week, nothing too intensive. So not really required, but something to think about, especially as we get into more coding next week. All right. So I know Ayush, I mean, you guys are good. Uh, Rachid, uh, Shiva, Maha, you guys in? I'm in. Okay, great. Shiva, you're in, great. Cool beans, all right, great to see. Cool, all right, so we are into our website. Just a quick introduction, guys, of how our website looks like. It looks like a black screen, nothing much going on, pretty bland right now, right? But that is not how it would look like come our fourth week. Now, basically how this works is that I would recommend you guys sign up and make an account with JS Fiddle because it's a great way for us to keep track of our code. What I will be doing is sharing this code link at the end of every session. So when our session here ends up today, I will post this link to the Google Classroom and you can go up and change or check out anything you like in the code. Say you fell behind, right? In the coming weeks, you can go to my code link, copy, paste, whatever you'd like, and take a look at what we accomplished in class. So make sure you get an account set up, although you're not new winner for today because we're just gonna do a quick preview today. Some quick features of how the website works. All of our HTML code will go in this first quadrant, right? It's like a number system right here. In this first area right here, our CSS will go right here and the JavaScript will go all right here. I would recommend that you name your fiddles. A fiddle is like your project, right? I'm just gonna say week one, uh, intro to web dev. This is the code from the first week of web development at the L Grove library. So that's gonna be my introduction. There, you don't need to add a whole description. This, I'm just doing this because you provide clarity to you guys. And then here are the cool buttons now. If I click the button run, we see a white screen populate, but there's nothing on it. It looks pretty bland, nothing much going on. So what we're gonna do is apply the first concept of ours, which we talked about today, that being the HTML concept of a button. So in order for us to code a button, what I'm gonna do is type this piece of code out. It's going to be shift, the less than sign. Just say button. And then we're just going to simply add the closing statement. That's going to be the greater than sign. And there we go. We got a button. There it is. It's a tiny button. Doesn't have much going on. It's a white button. I don't know if you can see it right there. But nothing's happening. There's no text on it. 
So let's add some text. How about we make a quick little quick little thing, which will uh, which will alert us something. So okay, this is gonna give a bit of a preview as to our next week coding concept. But what we're gonna do right now is have something which will ask for us for our name and then alert our name. So I'm gonna click create a bind now and I'm gonna add some text to it. And I'm gonna say, um, click to ask your name. And if I now click run, there we go. We see the button has some text on it. And I do realize since this is the first week, I'm gonna share the link to the code. So if you wanna open up directly the code, guys, and follow along there, that might make this week easier for you. So there is a link. If you wanna hop in and you'll come in directly to my code link now. All right, so now we got a button. We got a button with some text on it, which says, click to ask your name. But when I'm clicking on it, nothing is happening. Why is that? Well, anybody have any guesses? We got the front end set up, but what is missing right now? Back end. The back end, right? And the back end today is gonna be involved with what coding language? JavaScript. Dang, exactly, yep. So we have to talk about some JavaScript now. Now, I'm gonna write a piece of code, which we are gonna talk about. And do not worry, because we're gonna cover what this, this thing is next week. So I'm just gonna type it out. It's gonna be a function, um, ask me. Do not worry, we're gonna talk about what this function, what a function is next week. But right now, what I'm gonna do is create a JavaScript, just uh, some, fun some uh, variables right here. So I wanna store my name in a variable. How can I do that? Well, I'm gonna do var, create a variable name called my name and set it equal to my name, which is Rayon Siddiqui. Now, right here, let's take a moment and dissect what we just did. I'm saying, uh, I'm gonna quick annotate this. I just made, tell the computer, I'm making a variable. The name of the variable right here is my name. This is the name of the variable. And Rayon Siddiqui, is the value which the variable is holding. So uh, you did a good job earlier today. So you tell us an English statement. What is this, right, what's going on right here? What's going on? The variable my name is equivalent to Rayon uh, CD. You know, yes, I yep. So the variable my name is holding the value of my name, which is Rayon Siddiqui. So there's our variable, but now let's make something cool happen. How about when we click our variable? Oh, oh. All right, yeah, so when we click our variable, let's have the computer alert to us what our name is. So I'm gonna create an alert. It's gonna be alert at opening close parentheses. And then I'm gonna say your name is at a colon. Now, in order for us to link that string of the piece of text and a very, very variable, we're gonna do a plus and say the variable name. So now if I click run and click the button, nothing happens. Hmm, the code looks right. We got a variable, I'm alerting my name. I click run again, compile it again. Nothing's happening. Now this goes to something which we talked about today with buttons. Anybody have an idea why? Why is nothing happening when I'm clicking the button? Because you have to define it at the end. Avanish on the right trail. When I'm clicking the button, why is no action happening? Let's go back to one of our slides, right? So the button is there's an action which is supposed to happen. But the thing is, right now in our code, we haven't told the HTML what action is supposed to happen when the button is clicked. And the way we do that is create an on click. We're going to say on click equals the function's name. Now, the function, we'll talk about what a function is and all that more. But the function's name right here is ask name. And I'm just gonna add that right here. Click run. Now, if I click ask my name, there we go. We see your name is Rayon Siddiqui. And you guys might not be able to see that because I'm sharing my screen. So let me share my desktop screen. And now if I click run, click ask your name, there we go. We see the alert. Your name is Rayon Siddiqui. And now we can change up this button to anything we like. It could be Avanish's name. Your name is Avanish. If I click your name, your name is Avanish. It could be your name is Ayush. What's your name? Your name is Ayush. It could be, what is your name? It could be Shiv. Click your name, Shiv. Or it could be Ratchet too. You click run. 
with your name, Rachid, right? So that's a pretty cool concept of how we're able to apply what is your name and then store our name in a variable and then alert our name with a button and some JavaScript variables. Now you might be asking, why is our CSS, all the CSS looking so like bland, right? Like there's the button is, you know, a white button, a white background. It just looks super, uh, super plain and boring. So how do we make it actually look cooler? Well, there's a way we can do that. So we're going to talk about how to make this more possible. But since today's is a quick preview, I'm just going to do some quick code right here and say the class is going to be equal to a button. And if I go to my CSS, again, this is just me doing some code. You do not even know what this does right now. It's not important because the style, although it's important when we actually publish our website, it's not really that important when we're developing a website. So what I'm going to do is say the background color of my button is going to be, let's do blue. Now, if I run, voila, it's the ugly blue, but it's the blue of our, of our uh, button. Now, what I could also do is do a hex value of a green. If I click run, there we go. There we go. It's a green color button. Ask our name. We click the button and an action happens right there, relating all three of these files, HTML, responsible for the structure of our button, right? How the button is, where the button is, the CSS responsible for how does the button look like? And the JavaScript, the brains of the operation, responsible for the variables, responsible for making the action possible and allowing for our name to actually be displayed, which was stored in the variable. All right, so that was a quick preview today, guys. I'll post this coding link, nothing too extensive of what we will be accomplishing. And we're gonna get much more accustomed and comfortable with this website in the coming weeks. And go back to our slides now. So that was a quick preview of our JS Fiddle website, which we'll be utilizing to create our projects. And the project which we're going to begin started off with next week is I'll ask a question in the Google Classroom. It's going to be some type of quiz or a game project. And as in the next week as well, we're going to review some more important coding concepts involving that thing called a function and some more other JavaScript related coding concepts because that is bringing today's session, session to an end. Just a light refresher on today. And next week, we're going to get started to go more in deep, get more of our feet wet, and hopefully start to get some more code going out there as well. So I hope that you guys had a great time today. It was awesome meeting you guys here, some familiar faces. And I'm hoping to see all of you guys and more. If you guys know friends, cousins, peers who are interested in technology as well, spread the word. The more, the merrier. And we'll get some more cool stuff accomplished, learn some more great things, and have in a great time. So guys, it was great seeing you guys here today and I hope to see you guys next week and we will catch up next week then as well. You guys take care and catch you guys in the next one. See you guys. Bye.